after their first big mission, and that and which came a couple years before, Riggs and Murtaugh return. Let's talk about Lethal Weapon 2. Big days, entertainment rankings and reviews. So greetings, my fellow YouTubers, and welcome to Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. My name is Dual, better known to as the Big D, and this time around I bring to you a review of the 1989 buddy cop action flick Lethal Weapon 2, released by Warner Bros., directed by Richard Donner once more, with screenplay by Jeffrey Baum and story by Shane Black and Warren Murphy. Film stars... Mel Gibson and Danny Glover back in the roles of Riggs and Murtaugh. Plus Joe Pesci, who would later become a regular, who would make his debut in the franchise. Josh Ackland, Derek O'Connor, and Patsy Kensett. This, of course, is the follow-up to the 1987 Lethal Weapon film and second installment. Anyway... This time, Riggs and Murtaugh must protect an irritating federal witness while taking on a gang of South African drug dealers hiding behind diplomatic immunity. Yes. Now, if you haven't seen my review for the first Lethal Weapon, I advise you to click on that card right there. And that way you can catch up, and, or if you want to see it again before I go into this review. So I'll give you... Just a few minutes to do that, okay? Alright then, now if you're ready, let's get into our story. <clears throat> Two years after the events of the first film, LAPD Sergeants Martin Riggs and Roger Murtaugh are pursuing unidentified suspects transporting an illegal shipment of gold Krugerrands. The African -er apartheid government of South Africa subsequently orders LA Consul General Arjun Rudd and Security Agent Pieter Vorstedt to warn both detectives off the investigation. They are reassigned to protect an obnoxious federal witness, Leo Getz, after an attack on Murtaugh's home. It soon becomes clear that both cases are related. After an attempt on Leo's life, Riggs and Murtaugh learn of the former's murky past laundering funds for vengeful drug smugglers. Leo leads, leads them to the gang, excuse me. But upon dispatch and his would-be assassin and returning with backup, they are confronted by Rudd, who invokes diplomatic immunity on behalf of his unscrupulous associates. Though instructed to leave the case alone, Riggs begins to openly harass the South African consulate, defying Rudd and romancing his secretary, Rika van, de ha van den Haas, a liberal-minded african -er, who despises her boss and his racial philosophy. Murtaugh enlists Leo's help in creating a scene at the consulate that wins the support of anti-apartheid, apartheid, sorry if I mispronounced these, some of these words, protesters outside. Vorstedt is dispatched to murder all the officers investigating them, where Murtaugh deduces that Rudd is attempting to ship funds from his smuggling ring in the U.S. to Cape Town via Los Angeles Harbor. Two assassins attack Murtaugh at his home, but he kills them both with his contractor's nail gun, though Leo is abducted in the process. After killing many of the investigating officers, Vorstedt seizes Riggs at Van de Haas apartment and discloses that he was responsible for the death of Riggs' wife years earlier during a botched assassination attempt on him. He has his men kill Rika by drowning her and orders them to do the same to Riggs who escapes and brutally kills both of the men. He phones Murtaugh, declaring an intention to pursue Rudd and avenge his wife, Rika, and their fallen friends. The other policeman willingly forsakes his badge to aid his partner. After rescuing Leo and destroying Rudd's house, they head for Abba Varden, 
Rudd's freighter docked in the port of L.A. as the South Africans prepared their getaway with hundreds of millions in drug money. Alright, now for the ending. You know the procedure, like always. You have 5 seconds to stop this video. Go to the description box below and fast forward to the time below to avoid the ending spoilers. If you've seen the movie already, please continue on. Here we go. Okay, you've been warned. While investigating a guarded 40-foot cargo container at the docks, Riggs and Murtaugh are locked inside by Rudd's men. They break out of the box, scattering two pallets of Rudd's drug money into the harbor in the process. Riggs and Murtaugh engage in a firefight with some of Rudd's men aboard the Alba Varden before separating to hunt down Rudd. Riggs confronts and fights Vorstedt hand-to-hand, culminating when Riggs stamps Vorstedt with his own knife and crushes him by dropping a cargo container on him. Rudd retaliates by shooting Riggs in the back multiple times. Rudd again invokes diplomatic immunity upon seeing Murtaugh aiming his gun at him. Murtaugh fatally shoots him and then tends to Riggs, sharing a laugh with him as more LAPD personnel respond to the scene. End of story. So what did I think of Lethal Weapon 2? Well, this was actually the first of the franchise I ever saw. And I will say we got some real good performances. Mel Gibson and Danny Glover once again are great as Riggs and Murtaugh. But um, Joe Pesci uh, appears as Leo Getz. And of course the following year he would appear in one of my favorite holiday classics, Home Alone. And then later in other films such as Goodfellas, My Cousin Vinny, oh, and several others. Yes, um, he's pretty good as Leo gets. Joss Acklin, he of course would be in the first and the third installments of the Mighty Ducks franchise, plays Arjun Rudd. Not bad. Derek O'Connor plays Vorstead, very good. And Patsy Kensett plays Rika van den Haas. But we have a few others, but most notably, we R&B diva Darlene Love, who once again plays Murtaugh's wife, Trish. Yeah. Plus, we also have Steve Kahan, Mark Rolston, Dean Norris, Nestor Serrano, and many others. Still, this film was a big success, and it was the third most successful film in 1989, right, be right after Batman, also from Warner Brothers, and Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. The film got a ton of great response from everyone and what have you. I'm just going to say it's just really something... And I've got to say, it's very good. Now, like its predecessor, it's been released on physical media numerous times, including a, you know, a director's cut format. Which, I don't, I'm not sure how long it is, though, but anyway, yeah. Let's see. Michael Common and Eric Clapton return to work on the music, plus David Sanborn joins them. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, so. Which, of course, clapped in Sanborn and teamed with Randy Crawford to perform Bob Dylan's classic Knocking on Heaven's Door, which, of course, clapped in actually did before, well, well, a few years back on his own. It has several other songs as well. Anyway, yeah. So the soundtrack's pretty good. It also got nominated for Academy Award for Best Sound Editing as well. And it went on to make more than $227 million worldwide. So anyway, it seems to me that everybody really liked this and what have you. 
Now, according to Ryan Tamils, they say it may sport a thin plot to typical of action fair, but its combination of humor and adrenaline, along with the chemistry between its leads, make this a playful, entertaining sequel. Yes, I completely do agree and what have you. Uh, And the New York Times says if you like the first one, you'll like the second one. It's almost as simple as that. Well, all sorts of things you encounter. I mean, really some the LA Times was impressed with. So anyway, I'm going to say I really did enjoy Lethal Weapon 2, and it is pretty good. I enjoyed this just as much as the first one, but I can't guarantee where it'll be when I rank the franchise, which I'll do later in the week. But Lethal Weapon 2, with a great cast, including the same two great leads, plus great music and score, great, well, the story's not too bad, and the action's real good, the humor's good. So in the end, would I recommend Lethal Weapon 2? The answer is, hell yeah. This is definitely good. You, If you like the first one, you're going to enjoy the second one. Then you got to give it a try. So why are your thoughts on Lethal Weapon 2? Please tell me in the comment section below. If you like this video, click the like button, subscribe to my channel, and be a part of the Big D Nation. Join me next time when I bring to you a review of Lethal Weapon 3. Thanks for watching, and if you like this, you may want to consider check out my... Uh, reviews for these other films. Now, I mentioned this in the last video, but I made a slight error because I failed to mention it was both the first and second one. So here they are again. The upper left-hand corner is my back-to-back -back review of Bad Boys and Bad Boys 2, which I failed to bring up Bad Boys 2 in the last video. The upper right-hand corner is my spoiler-free review for its sequel, Bad Boys for Life. Or if you just want another, um, well, buddy flick, which is kind of crazy and what have you, see my review of Smokey and the Bandit 2 from 1980 in the bottom left-hand corner. And the bottom right-hand corner is the button you can click to subscribe. If you like rankings and reviews on movies, TV, music, video games, etc., then I'm your guy. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'm the Big D saying see ya.